Hi, I'm Dana Bourgeois. I'm the CEO and founder of Bourgeois Guitars here in Lewiston, Maine. I started building guitars when I was in college. I believe it was my junior year in college. And uh, I ran into Irving Sloan's book, Classic Guitar Construction, in a local bookstore. And, you know, I was, a guitar, I was already a guitar player. And so I bought the book. It was fascinating. I looked through the pictures were amazing. I said, wow, I bet I could do this. My dad was an amateur woodworker and he had a, a woodworking shop in our basement. And my grandfather was a machinist. So he had a machine shop and I kind of grew up around shops and tools. And I guess all I can say is, although I never really learned to use them at an early age, I wasn't intimidated. I, I first started to uh, get interested in building guitars um, when a, so I was a ship captain for many years and, and one of my uh, mates had a brother who was a, uh, a luthier out in Arizona and he moved up to Maiden and, and needed a place to set up shop. So I kind of made a deal with him that he could use my, uh, he could use my barn to set up his guitar building shop if he taught me how to build a guitar. So I, I spent a number of years working with him primarily because I wanted to build my father an instrument. My father's a you know, professional musician for many years. Um, and man, I just got bit by the bug. And so I, I would ship out for six to eight months a year. And then when I was home, I'd spend all my free time building guitars. And I, I did that for about 11 years. And, um, and then I had a little boy and decided I, I needed to be home more than four months a year. So I kind of threw a Hail Mary and, and brought some guitars to Dana and he welcomed me on board as, as one of his luthiers in the shop. It all starts with Dana. The, I don't know if there's a soul here that um, wasn't drawn here to have the opportunity to work with one of the last living masters in you know, the flat top steel string acoustic guitar manufacturing industry. They're just unfortunately a dying breed. There's a new generation coming up and that's fantastic, but, but those are the guys that have had the opportunity to work you know, alongside people like Dana and Bill Collings and Richard Hoover for um, you know, a, a good chunk of time. And I think that that passion uh, for excellence and mastery in the craft is really what drives. No, nobody's, you don't, you don't see a lot of Mercedes Benz out in the, in the parking lot, right? So people are here for the love of the craft. And um, I think that comes through in, in the, end, the end product. I mean, I've always felt that um, a guitar ought to have good string to string, note to note balance, ought to have um, good presence, and, you know, which is different from volume, you know, diff presence is different from decibels. You want to be heard, but, it, you know, but you want to be heard in an ensemble. And character, some kind of some tonal character, something that's appealing and unique and it gives it an identity. So those are the three things that I've always tried to build into every guitar, regardless of the size or the tone woods. Mostly what we're looking for is the potential that's inherent in that slice. Um, what I mean by potential is, does it have long sustain? Can you um, hold, grip the wood in a many, many different places and as you tap here a very musical, resonant tone? Can you identify chords? Can you identify, um, sometimes a, a soundboard will have a very strong fundamental and, and the overtones aren't as pronounced and then sometimes the it's very, very balanced. There's tons and tons of overtones, and that's information that helps you select what type of guitar you're gonna eventually build for that soundboard. How that translates uh, is, a, a lot of it is standing right next to Dana, who has done this thousands and thousands of times, and um, having him explain to you, hey, do you hear this, do you hear that? So there's a, there's a wine tasting element to it. Uh, but then there's also the experience of actually holding the wood in your hands. Um, the stiffness of the wood is a major, major factor. So when we're tapping and we're judging that piece of wood, um, it's not just how it sounds, it's how it, it's the stiffness, and it's the, uh, both directions, across the grain and along the grain. Um, quite a few variables, but I think if, if you can select for the highest potential piece and understand what its strengths and weaknesses are, it's much easier to place it on the correct guitar. The thing that's really great about how Dana voices guitars is 
And it took me a while to totally understand this. It actually took me until going up there to really, really understand this. It's not about going for a particular sound and making every guitar sound like this. It's about taking every single piece of wood and going, how, what can I make this be? How great can I make this be? What does this excel at? And where can I help it do even more of that? And I think that's what's so cool about those guitars because every single one of them is excelling in a way that I've not heard another guitar do. Um, and that's been kind of really great to find because every guitar for me is a treat and I get to hear what it is capable of being. You know, no two pieces of wood, even from the same log, are going to have the same properties. Um, so you really have to get your hands on and work with and listen to and understand, you know, the stiffness to weight ratio, the, all the different characteristics of a given piece of wood um, to understand what to do to it dimensionally. So, you know, I think every luthier has their own approach to any given component of the guitar building process. Um, you know, Dana has refined and continues to refine how he approaches um, all different aspects of the guitar construction. Specifically voicing, that's something that, you know, he always says his best guitar is still in front of him. And, and so every guitar that comes out of the doors, he's, he's hoping is going to be the one, you know, and hopefully that never changes, that sort of asymptotic pursuit of excellence. The thing I love about the relationship we have built over the last couple of years with Bourgeois is the fact that we have such a great communication between us and them, Dana, the entire team where we can go, all right, this is what I want to build. Now show me some sets of woods. And they show me sets of woods and we talk about that. And they will come back and say, well, I don't know how that's going to really do the thing that you want it to. So now we, and we, it's the communication back and forth to be able to make the guitars that we want to hear and they want to see done. And then we get to kind of go, well, I like the look of this and I like the sound of this. And we are able to kind of make that guitar happen. I personally am honored uh, to have been able to get a relationship with Dana Bourgeois, one of the finest guitar builders out there and a person who has done so much for luthiery and the uh, guitar building industry and be able to kind of pick his brain and work together and uh, I just know that only thing we're going to see is even better instruments showing up in here in the future. <laughs>